our captain or the leader of the ship in Harry Kane, I know Lloris is the captain, but in, in terms of the man that we all look to, Harry Kane don't want to be there. He don't want to be there. He's lazy. He's not working hard. His head goes down when he doesn't get the ball. He's not getting chances. He's not interested. He was shocking today. The fans don't him. But what that's doing is actually poisoning the rest of the players because they're looking at him. And if one man stops running, and then two men stop running, then four or five stop running, and then it gets to the point where you're like, well, if he's not running, I'm not running. I'm not doing it. Can he's you leave him out, though? Can, can you leave him out, Jamie? Jamie, can you just leave Kane out for a little period of time? Of is the manager... Brownie, when, the he's, three, when he's the manager, can he do that? Absolutely. First three games, he didn't play because he wasn't fit or he said he didn't want to be here. We won the first three games without him. So, of course, we can leave him out. Son can play as a number nine on his own up top. He's, he's very good at it. Harry Kane, where's he playing? He spent half the time playing in midfield today. Like, he's not a midfielder. He's meant to be the talisman of the football club, the man who's meant to be on the end of things. All he does is come deep, come deep. When he does get in behind today, I mean, this is the first time he actually got some space. Harry Kane wouldn't normally just stand and stutter and try and chip one to the back post. He would try and get that out of his feet and wrap it across the box. So I don't know They've what They've got a huge on. problem, haven't they? They've got a huge it's problem. If they actually different. leave him out, if they leave him out, Jamie, is that why he's 30 million quid off his... 30 million quid gone yes. for, the, for the team, for the asset, for the sale. Where do you, they're, in, they're in such a mess. This is the problem that they created. The managers obviously sat there thinking, I'm only nine games in. I want to actually get a feel. I want to try to build something. If he leaves the star player out upstairs, they're going to be saying, well, hang on, we're going to lose 30 million quid in the, in the, in the transfer fee on him. He's our leader. Well, I don't care about money, Brownie. I don't, I don't care about but money. But I think they do. I know they you do. don't. But I think this is ultimately this football club, Jamie. We know, we've been there, we've seen how it's run. The numbers have to be right. And, and that's first and foremost. It's a difficult situation. I'd leave him out. The manager's got to leave him out. This is the first time I've seen ever with Harry Kane that the fans turned on him today. He was getting booed every time he got the ball, every time he'd give the ball away. So, the first so you look at the next four games, Jamie. You look at the next four games. Everton, Leeds, Burnley, Brentford. You would say their games... Definitely that Spurs can, can go on and win with Kane or without Kane. So does the manager stay for those four games, knowing that there's games that you should be able to go on and win, or do you make that change? Because it's so early, isn't it? It's difficult. Yes, there's one with Kane, one without. I'm in? sure some of the supporters are going to bring, well, who are they exactly bring in, Brownie? Brownie they who couldn't they do bring? it last time, could they? They struggled to bring someone else in now. So for me personally, that's, that makes it even harder. And uh, these are the, these are exactly the problem. But Nuno was like sixth choice, and the recruitment was late. The manager was late. It's 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 just not looking good, and that's the reason he didn't sell Harry Kane for me. I think he would have gone Manchester City for a really really good offer. He wanted to go, but Daniel Levy didn't dare do it. How much is his value now, Jamie? I mean, would City still be interested in him? Come next summer, would they still be thinking, oh, we want to get a Harry Kane because suddenly. Erling Haaland, for example, has a buyout clause which is activated. I mean, there's, mm. there's other players out there. Would they still want to go after Kane? I mean, is Kane harming himself as much as he's harming Spurs by not well, performing at the level we know he can perform? There's two, there's two ways you go about this as a player. You can, you can do what Harry Kane's doing, which is look disinterested, and you get yourself out of the football club. In the end, you go, right, he's got to go. It's time to move on. We all thought Harry Kane was going to be professional and stay and, you know, he'd still score goals and run around because he loves Tottenham, but that's not happening. So I think your agent then needs to go to Man City and say, look, he needs out. The value's obviously going to go down. He's still the Harry Kane that you wanted, but he's just not in the right frame of mind at Tottenham. But if you sign him for Man City, he will be the Harry Kane that we all know he can be because he's going to have a fresh lease of life. He's going to be getting more chances. And I think he'll be under a top manager with Guardiola. So I think they would still be interested in him, but it ain't going to be more, any more than 70 million, 75 million. I wouldn't be paying over 100 million pounds for him now. Absolutely no chance. It's also what you were saying early on about how it has an effect on the rest of the squad. It makes it sound, Brownie, like footballers are sheep that they're following whoever is the alpha male in the side. And I'm not trying to knock you both because I've watched you both play football on the pitch. You both are hard guys. I mean, you weren't afraid to stand up to anybody. I mean, are the Tottenham players sheep? Is, is that what we're implying here? If Harry Kane plays badly, if he's leading with that example, the rest of the team is going to do the same? Isn't there shame in that? 
I think we've got to be careful here. Listen, those players will want Harry Kane in the dressing room. They'll be delighted that he stayed. I personally would have if I was one of the midfield players and you've got Harry Kane at the top of the pitch. A Harry Kane playing well, you'd certainly have wanted him in your dressing room. You'd have been delighted to have him. So I think as a leader, when he's not playing well, you're also thinking, well, we're not going to. But as we've just highlighted, it's not just Harry Kane on this occasion. It's all around the squad. It's different players. They're not happy. There's changes. We've seen Harry Winks nowhere near. Deli Ali, for instance, these are lead players. And Dumbelli not getting his chance. Then he's coming in. We've seen changes at the back. We've seen regular. So there's many, many ways here that we're, we're not seeing it correct in this first side. So we can't just blame Kane, ultimately. There's other players in there that's creating it. A, a, a not a great environment, not great quality on the pitch. Has Kane got something to answer for today? Yes, for sure. We didn't see that desire. We didn't see him driving around. I think he's done that at times since he's come back and realised he hasn't gone to, to Manchester City, obviously internationally as well. He's tried to perform. But now the team's sort of falling away. It's getting much, much worse. And he's going to be the one that's going to pick up the most criticism. Damon? He's called, I think it's a toxic environment. I really do. I think it, that the players there... Um, they're not playing for each other. I think they're going out there playing individually. You know, individual performances all over the park. Um, it's no, and I think the manager has got a lot to, to to say for himself as well because you know he's the guy at the top. It, 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 when you look to someone to get the best out of your team at half time when they're flat. I mean, against West Ham, we come out in the second half and we didn't even have a shot on target. You know, did we really have one today in the second half? I can't remember any sort of clear-cut chances, really. So that's the manager as well. Your tactics, the way you're set up, the way you want to go and get the best out of the group of players that you've got. He looks flat on the side of the pitch. He's standing there, arms folded, head down. You know, it doesn't look inspiring. You know, I look, I look at the squad of players and I think, are they inspired? Are, are they, do they really want to play for this club? Do they want to run around? Are they, have they got direction? Where's the leaders in the group? I've said this for ages. But there's not enough leaders at Tottenham Hotspur. And Harry Kane was that. I don't think he is that now. I don't think he's interested. He wants out. OK. Uh, we're going to hear from the manager in just a moment. But before that, here's a, a hypothetical question for you. Given Kane's performances so far, we're right about to get into the month of November. January comes along. Transfer window opens up. Manchester City, Ferran Torres, who's been playing as a false nine, has got an injury. Raheem Sterling looks like he's had a falling out with Pep Guardiola. No idea what's going on internally. Just an outside observation and according to certain reports. What if Manchester City say, hey, if we really want to have a go at the Champions League this season, if we really want to have a go at the Premier League to, to retain the title, maybe we should go for Harry Kane. And if he really does go for, say, 70, 80 million, Jamie first... Do you think City should do it? Do you think City should come back in yes. January and get Kane? Yes, I do. I think they should. Yeah, I think I think you're gonna if he if he left Spurs, I think you'll see a different Harry Kane. He'll be with a, he'll be with a world class manager, a world class squad, and he'll have a new lease of life. He, he he needs to move on for everyone's sake, for him, for the club, for the fans. It's it, in my opinion, he needs to go. Michael. You are at the Etihad Stadium as we speak. I mean, you could shout it out and see who replies to you. Who wants Harry Kane? But looking at their performance today, City, that is, do you think that they would do well if Harry Kane was in the side? Do you think that would put them as... Uh, I know they're already favourites for the, for, the, for the Champions League, one of the favourites, I should say, but maybe it'll take them up a notch in terms of being favourites if they had Harry Kane. I think what it's going to do, it's going to give Manchester City a different option. We've seen Phil Ford and play that. False number nine today, Kevin De Bruyne going pressing like a 4-4-2 out of possession to go and change things for City. But there's been lots of chances we've seen in the week, didn't we, in the, the Carabao Cup. They couldn't get that goal after dominating possession. So what Harry Kane does, and yes, it's a bit of a concern for me as a Manchester City um, sort of ex-player sat here in the stadium, is a Harry Kane that used to be further up the pitch, sitting as a nine and and being in the box a little bit more, I'd say we'll be more attractive to this side. But Kane dropping deep, I think he'll still score. He'll be great link-up play and runners all around him. But I just think he'll be a great addition. The issue is we've got Haaland coming up. Uh, now Manchester City said, well, 
We bid Excel 125 million pounds. That wasn't enough. Where's our bid now? When we come to the January window, is there going to be somebody else a little bit cheaper at the end of the season? Do we wait a bit longer? Do they feel that Harry Kane situation and he's a little bit a little bit older? Things change. So that, that's ultimately the problem. They need a nine. They're going to go and get a nine. But they whether wait till the summer, we'll soon see. And and that performance today, not scoring might help that sort of situation where they say, OK, we'll pay that little bit more money now and we'll get the job done because we feel like it's so tight to go and win the Premier League. What's your advice, though, to the hierarchy at Manchester City and to Daniel Levy and well, Tottenham and Harry Kane? Do you think they should do it? I, well, the yeah. issue is... Yeah, go on, Jay. The issue is, is, is Daniel Levy doesn't want to sell him because he understands the pressure that he's on. So if he, if he felt like he was going to get £125 million in the summer... He was, he'd probably say, well, I'll still get 100 or 95 in January. So who am I going to replace that sort of asset with for 25, 30 million pounds to run to the start of the season, to get to, to January with the quality he's got? He's very much a numbers man. He sees that that probably wouldn't work. He's going to raise all the back of the supporters. He hopes he goes a little bit further with the results. They haven't been good to him the last few weeks and the pressure's gone. So... I think for City's you know, point of view, Pep's actually said he would have loved Harry Kane. He still wants a striker. And maybe some of the games lend itself to sort of say to the board, let's go and get that striker. We need somebody in now. We don't want to wait till the summer.